This report was completed with the guidance, help, and advice of Dr. Lawanda Jolly, Director of the Water Resources Micro Laboratory of Clemson University. This presentation will focus on a recently recognized health danger, benthic pollution, the proliferation and accumulation of deadly organisms that feed, breed, and thrive on polluted sediment that forms when untreated sewage and waste settles from our fast-moving streams and rivers and is deposited in the bottom of our slower-moving rivers and lake beds. Here, the sludge provides unlimited nutrition to deadly bacteria such as E. coli. Somewhere in South Carolina, municipal sewage plants and residential septic systems are failing, allowing untreated sewage to flow into our waterways. This occurs 10 times each and every week of the year, and each failure allows an average of 27,000 gallons of sewage into the South Carolina waterways. You're telling us that 10 times a week, each and every week of the year, that 27,000 gallons of sewage is discharged into South Carolina waterways? That is over 14 million gallons per year. Incredible. Actually, as long as the municipality reports it, it isn't even illegal. On top of that, innumerable homes in South Carolina have failing septic systems and there is no mandatory testing or even periodic maintenance. The sewage contains bacteria and viruses that are a health hazard to humans and this accumulation of benthic sediment provides an inexhaustible supply of food for the pathogens. South Carolina government needs to sponsor change before it's too late. Not only do they flourish and grow, every time there's a hard rain, or children wading, or a boat with a large wake creating a strong current, the sediment with the attached pathogens becomes resuspended in the water. Over time this happens again and again, eventually covering most of the benthic area of the lake or river with flourishing pathogens attached to the sediment. You mean this stuff is all over the bottom of all our lakes and rivers? Exactly. This is why even on Lake Kiwi, often described as pristine, the benthic layer testing shows E. coli greatly exceeds the safe level of 126 parts per 100 milliliters on most any beach or boat ramp. The health danger is there are no warnings. If it's happening here, it's happening everywhere in South Carolina. You can imagine what boat trailers and the propeller spinning in the shallow water do to disturbing the polluted sediment and resuspending the E. coli bacteria in the surface water. The benthic bacteria concentration at the boat launch at Devil's Fork State Park on the even more pristine Lake Jocassi is 4170 parts per 100 milliliters or 33 times the safe limit. And Lake Hartwell isn't immune either. The benthic sediment testing for E. coli at the Broad River resulted in numbers 35 to 99 times the safe limit. And the tests at the Shauga River were 15 times the safe limit. Similar testing at the Saluda River resulted in benthic pollution over 437 times the safe limit. It seems that this test data is not good news for three of South Carolina's largest rivers. 
The pollutants of these rivers also adversely affect countless downstream lakes and tributaries, and ultimately their toxins are deposited on our state's beautiful beaches and shores. What a tragedy! Here is the Lake Kiwi Beach we showed you earlier with heavy benthic or sediment E. coli concentrations. But interestingly, surface water testing on an empty beach shows almost no harmful pathogens. So are we safe? Likely not. Children or adults walking into the water at a beach can stir up the sediment and resuspend the attached pathogens just as easily as the boat wake we saw earlier. Resuspended pathogens can surround his or her body, getting into any cut or scratch, ears, eyes, nose, or throat, causing a very nasty infection or possibly something even more serious. Are you sure the Department of Health and Environmental Control and the Environmental Protection Agency know about this? Wouldn't they force corrective measures if it were dangerous? Of course they're aware but they never seem to mandate even the simplest of solutions when a health issue is discovered. They simply post warning signs, and that is only mandatory on ocean beaches. The Clean Water Act has no provisions for similar warnings at any of the locations shown in this video. I know it sounds crazy. Interestingly, it appears that the source of the problem at ocean beaches is the pathogens in the benthic area just like in our South Carolina lakes and rivers. When DHIC closes a beach, the repeated description of the cause is strong winds flowing over the water causing a type of wave action in the ocean that stirs up sediment and the pathogens residing there. When that happens and the regular surface water sample are taken, they show high levels of these pathogens. DHIC's description sounds identical to the description of the resuspension of the benthic pathogens we made earlier about our lakes and rivers. Feeble warnings, and those only on the coastline, seem hardly sufficient when thousands are being affected by the toxic pathogens in our inland streams, rivers, and lakes. The solutions are easy, well known, and straightforward. Prevention is the only real answer to clean up this mess in our South Carolina waterways and coastline. What are the solutions and why don't the government agencies responsible for clean water do something? They basically hope the public doesn't find out. And if they do, they seem to hide behind weak laws and legislation. Change is necessary in our laws and legislators. And since they are driven by public opinion, we need to demand that laws be changed and enforced to protect our beautiful state. The only way to correct this dangerous outbreak of E. coli and other pathogens is to remove the food supply. And that means stopping untreated waste from municipal sewage systems and home septic systems from reaching our lakes and streams in the first place. The beginning of a solution is passing new legislation forcing treatment plants and targeted homes to higher standards, better education, and mandatory new technology and design, along with consistent testing to ensure compliance. Any treatment plant that has had three spills of over 5,000 gallons in a 12-month period would have mandatory review and develop an action plan for improvement to include additional personnel training and better procedures and the replacement of personnel that do not comply. Also mandate that septic systems would require inspection at home sale and regular testing thereafter. And finally create legislation that force waste treatment facilities to notify the affected public when discharges of more than 5,000 gallons occur. These solutions are really quite practical, economical, and easy to implement. So we ask you to get involved and contact your legislator and demand he or she support cleaning up this mess so our children and grandchildren can remain healthy while enjoying the beauty of South Carolina's streams, rivers, lakes, and shoreline. It's in your hands. <laughs>